Hi, this is Anfisa from Retina Coach and the topic today will be vital dyes for membrane stain. But before I move to this topic, I want to thank everyone who wrote us for a positive responses and for taking the time to share your feedback. This project was released just a few months ago and we already got a multiple comments on the need for such a platform. Your opinion is very important to us and thank you for sharing it. So back to the topic, vital dyes for membrane stain can be divided into the few groups. The dyes that can be used to identify both epiretinal and interlimited membranes, for example, triamcinolone particles or membrane blue dual. The dyes that can identify only the epiretinal membrane, for example, trifan blue, and the dyes that can identify the interlimited membrane, for example, brilliant blue G dye, or endocyan and green. Of course, both membranes can be peeled without any dye, but this can be quite challenging. I will start with the case of epiretinal membrane where dual blue dye was used. Membrane blue dual is a heavy dye solution used to stain both the interlimiting as well as epiretinal membranes. This is a mixed solution consisting of triple blue that has a high affinity to epiretinal membrane, brilliant blue with a high affinity to interlimital membrane, and polyethylene glycol used to increase the weight of the dye and allow it to stain only the targeted area in a fluid-filled eye. In this video, the surgeon removed the epiretinal membrane, and now he starts to peel also an interlimital membrane. One time stain for two minutes was sufficient in this case. You could see that both membranes identified very good with the blue, but sometimes restain is required. Here is another case where a dual blue dye was used. This patient had a recurrent retinal detachment with severe proliferative vitreoretinopathy. Dual blue dye was used to identify fibrotic membranes for their further peeling. Interesting that the reason why Tripan Blue can provide staining of epiretinal as well as PVR membranes is that it cannot traverse the membrane of a live cell, but it can easily pass through the membranes of dead cells. In contrast, interlimited membrane is a living tissue that does not absorb the Tripan Blue and requires the use of other dyes. This fact is a reason why mixed solutions like a membrane blue dual were created. In cases where dual blue dye is not available and both epiretinal and interlimited membranes are planned to be peeled, there are few available options to identify them. Some surgeons prefer to peel the epiretinal membrane without any stain and then inject the dye suitable for interlimited membrane identification. Others use a double stain technique, where first of all, triamcinolone injected to identify the epiretinal membrane, like in the case that you see now. And when epiretinal membrane is spilled, dye with high affinity to interlimited membrane used for further assistance. Here the membranes were peeled and blocked which means as a single lamina. And after staining with a brilliant peel dye, only remnants of interlimited membrane were identified and removed. Few vital dyes are available for selective staining of interlimited membrane. First one is a brilliant blue dye, which provides an excellent staining of the interlimited membrane with no toxic effect on the retina. It depends on the surgeon preferences for how long to stain. On the one hand, the longer you wait, the better staining will be. But some researchers show that dyes can increase the rigidity of the interlimited membrane. So from the other hand, the longer you wait, the more fragile the membrane will be. The second dye available for identification of the interlimited membrane is in the sun and green. In contrast to brilliant blue dye, ICG has a photosensitizing properties and can be toxic to the retina. 
that it's important to use the lowest possible concentration, but lower concentration provides less staining. In the case that you are watching now, the surgeon injected the ICG and first of all removed the epiretinal membrane. You can see that epiretinal membrane didn't stent at all and at the same time interlimiting membrane had a characteristic green color after the staining. More videos you can find in our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it to stay updated and visit our Retina Coach website. Thank you for your attention.